Well, hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I'm excited to bring back in to the studio and the Dare to Hear podcast, Venner Alston. If you didn't hear her episode before, I'm going to drop it in the show notes so you can go back and listen to that. But today we're going to talk about her brand new book, Encountering the Living God. And it's really a powerful book about encounters. But first, if you haven't heard um, her before, you don't know who she is, let me tell you a little bit about her. So Dr. Venner Alston travels worldwide communicating hope and offering kingdom solutions to individuals and uh, and societal issues. Through Schools of the Prophets, Venner is committed to equipping believers across the globe to do the work of the ministry. She is the founder and apostle of Global Leadership University and Global Outreach Ministries and Training Center. And she lives in Wisconsin. Well, welcome Welcome back, Venner, to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on again. It is my great pleasure and delight. Uh, well, I was super excited to see that you had a brand new book coming out because I loved um, before your your one before. And you actually talk a lot about that in the book, which I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so glad I read that. Um, mm-hmm. But this book, Encountering the Living God, it addresses misconceptions and confusion around spiritual encounters. And so I thought we'd just start right off at the beginning and have you kind of explain what is a God encounter or spiritual encounter? What are you talking about in the book? When I'm talking about that, I am talking about these incredible moments where the veil that separates eternity from this place that's governed by time is pulled back and someone from uh, God's kingdom, whether it's an angel, whether it's a manifestation of himself, whatever it is that God has chosen for us in that moment, we come face to face with that. It is a moment where time suspends and we are faced face to face with 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 heaven and uh and it's incredible and it's weighty and it's transformative it's all of that but the 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 definition that i really wanted people to walk away with it's these moments that we didn't necessarily expect where the the, the veil is pulled back and eternity steps in, and we are now encountering, God is encountering us. There's something he's wanting us to know. That is an encounter. That is so good. And and you say this too, which I really appreciated this. And you said early on in the book, you say every encounter must submit to scripture. Why was that important for you to say that? And why, why is it that it has to do that? We're living in a time where uh, we are surrounded by uh, representations of the supernatural. So we have the occultic stuff that we see on television, whether it's Charmed or whatever the program is. And we have a generation that's growing up looking at supernatural things as though it's just a net, uh, it's just okay, it's all okay. And I wanted, I felt it was important to differentiate between what God would have comes out of heaven and what is coming out of the kingdom of darkness. Because in that place, that eternal place, uh, both portals are open. And I wanted people to understand and have some way of knowing what, what you're encountering, what is the origination of it, and the way to prove or disprove that is through scripture. If it doesn't agree with the carrot with the word of God, if it if it if it violates the principle of scripture, if it is, if it doesn't honor God, it is not drawing us to the heart of Jesus. I would be very suspect of it, and I would discard it immediately. Mm, that's so good, um, and it's so important too. And and that kind of goes with any prophetic word or any any kind of supernatural, uh, spiritual thing of the Lord. It has to line up with Scripture. And I'm so glad that you put that in there. Um, you said this. You said um, encounters not only lead us to God, but they also unveil His plans and intentions for us. And I was mm-hmm. like, that's so good. So kind of explain how encounters can unveil His plans for us. We see it. We can look at a, a story like with Daniel and the king is having a dream and they're they're wanting interpretation. And he refers to him as the revealer of secrets. 
Um, he says, and I believe it's in numbers that if there's a prophet, if, if there, if anyone is a prophet, he said, I'll make myself known to him in a dream or in a vision of the night. And so God says throughout scripture that he will reveal his plans. He will reveal his purposes. God absolutely wants us to know we are living in this timed existence. He wants us to know some things about his plan. He wants us to know some things that are coming on the earth. He wants to give us revelatory strategies so that we are victorious from season to season in our lives. So this is why God does this, so that we are drawn to him. And I think the other thing that's important to know, God is the initiator of the encounter. And what I teach people is this, don't pursue an event, which an encounter is a supernatural event. Pursue him. If we pursue him, he's he's showing up in some way. He's coming into our dreams. He's It's going to be an open vision. It's going to be some manifestation of him because we have set our heart on pursuing him. So I felt like we 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 need we need to we need to know the difference. Yeah. And, and we it, need to recognize that they're for us mm -hmm. and they're not just for those that we deem to be super spiritual. They're not for everybody. I believe that encounters are for everybody. Mm, I do too. And I, and I was so glad that you talked about that. You also talked about um, that there's a difference between God's purpose and Satan's manifesto, which I think is a good lead in from what we just talked about because it's that the, there are both sides to it. So can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yes. So when we study scripture and we go back to Ezekiel, we go back to Isaiah and we understand the fall of, of Lucifer, I will exalt myself. Be, I, I will as, as ascend beyond. I'm gonna. My throne is gonna be higher than his. What does he want? He wants worship. He has. He has an agenda. His agenda has not changed. We see it again when Jesus is uh, uh, doing that 40 day fast and he comes to the end of it and guess who appears? And what he wants is his worship. He wants him to bow. He wants him to honor him. So that agenda has not changed at all. And when we understand that hell has an agenda, the kingdom of heaven has an agenda, it is only as we are align with God and his agenda that we are truly overturning every uh, evil edict, every evil gesture that comes out of the plot and plan of the enemy. He has a manifesto. He's not changed that. He will not change that. Yeah, that's so good. Um, so what are you, do you talk about common factors uh, across all encounters? Can you kind of talk about what are some common factors that we'll see? Some common factors will, first of all, it's going, you're going to experience, at least in every encounter, every God encounter that I've had, I've always experienced the love of God. Mm. Uh, it's always been his love. It's always been, uh, for me, overwhelming presence. Okay. It's, there's been voice something that I heard, something that I saw, it agrees with the rule of scripture. Uh, it tells me something about God's plan. It tells me something about me and his desire for me. It may be God telling me something about uh, something in a nation. So I don't want, I don't want to exclude that part of it. Most of the time God is talking to me about me, but there are times, there are specific times that God is talking to me about something in his plan. And that might be a global issue. That might be a territorial issue, something God is wanting us to know. Mm, that's so good. Um, and also you talk about, you know, kind of misconceptions that people get confused about. So can you talk a little bit about what some of those misconceptions might be? We think that, uh, we think that, uh, I think that one big misconception is we don't believe that they're for everybody. Mm. We have a way of, um, uh, let me use just a word that's a little bit strong, but it's accurate. We tend to deify leaders. We tend to exalt leaders and feel that they are somehow more spiritual. The apostle is more spiritual than the guy that is the uh, parking lot attendant. And, 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 and the reality is, I believe that for every individual, there are encounters that God has planned for every individual. And as we move through time, I believe that those, those moments manifest. Now, the caveat to that is we don't always recognize them. Mm. We don't always recognize them if they're, if they're slight. 
Okay, so I've had very weighty uh, encounters and I've, I've had moments that can be a little bit more slight. And if I'm not discerning, it would be possible for me to miss that. But what helps us is when we step into those moments, we also hear his voice. We will see a representation of him. So there are some things there that are like the alarm clock. Look, 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 listen, listen. And if we pay attention to that. Mm, that's so good. Um, so when we get these God encounters, um, sometimes we have to interpret them. Um, it's not just like, here it is. And it's all laid out for us. Sometimes we have to um, interpret them. So what framework should we use um, to understand and interpret our God encounters? I believe that if we start with, I start with certain things. Okay. So one of the things, if I'm recognizing that I am in an, in an encounter, I am going to, in my spirit, man, I start asking questions. What do you want me to know? Mm. What is it that you want me to see? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. What is this about? If I'm in a dream encounter, then I'm watching the Im I'm watching the imagery and all of it gets filtered back to scripture. So I start by asking God questions. And then my next step is I am going to look at scripture and validate or disqualify those moments. Mm. So that's, that's a process. If, if what I want the hearers, those that are tuning in, if they treat an encounter like a dream. Mm. A dream must be interpreted. God uses imagery. And I believe that one of the reasons God uses imagery rather than just saying it straight out, sometimes he does, but most of the time it must be interpreted. And what happens when we are looking for interpretation? There's a pursuit. Mm -hmm. We are pursuing him in a certain way. And God loves when we pursue him. Yeah, he really does. And, and it's, it's awesome. Um, you talk about the snare of comparison and, and I really like this. You said, um, you opened up this section with, we've been lulled into accepting unrighteousness as righteousness. We struggle to separate the profane from what is holy and righteous. And so, you, and then you go on, but why was it important for you to put in this snare of comparison, um, when it comes to encounters? Um, I've watched people over, uh, over the time that I've just been aware of these types of things. And I've watched people listen to someone that has great stories, that has great testimonies about moments with God. And I've watched people turn away from those moments, somehow feeling inferior. And so it becomes a snare. You feel they can feel like they can walk away feeling like God doesn't love them as much. They're not as spiritual uh, in all of that. And so that was one thing that I was trying to communicate um, in the book. The other thing that I was really trying to uh, communicate is we have, we, we, we have so much in the body of Christ that, um, in our churches, in our ministries, in our gatherings, that is not honoring of who God is. And it is so far removed from uh, what the life of a believer should look like. But we somehow have accepted all of it under the guise of uh, hyper grace or whatever term we want to apply to it. And I felt like we needed to understand that not every, not everything, because oh, here's a Here's a way to say it. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so do uh, those uh, demonic spirits. They, they, they disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness, as an angel of light. And sometimes we're looking at something that is not God honoring. It is not Jesus centered. It is not, it is not Christ focused. And we somehow feel like, especially if they have a title on their name, we feel like we have to accept that. And we actually don't. And, and the other thing that I tell people, uh, we can learn, I can hear your testimonies of encounters and I can learn and I can be encouraged, but I shouldn't expect the exact same moments in time that you have had. God has something different, similar, but different for me. 
Yeah. And that's good. Cause I think sometimes we do hear other people's testimonies. And in, in fact, in the back of the book, you have some amazing testimonies that you share from other people. Um, and I think sometimes we think, Oh, it's going to be the same exact way. And if it doesn't happen, then I think we discount it or we actually miss that. We just had this God encounter. Um, and so I'm glad that you address that. And thank you for that. Um, there, with this, I want you to kind of talk about, um, you say that, um, supernatural encounters make God more real to people. How is that? And why do you think that is? Supernatural encounters, they make God more real. We come away from them with a conviction. There is something that we know that we didn't know before. I had uh, one of my early on encounters was a destiny encounter. And in that moment, uh, in that in that season of time of my life, I was being identified. And part of what I was asking the Lord is, who was I? What what was I called to? What what was my purpose? And I had heard some things in the realm of prayer, and then there had been prof- certain prophecies that had spoken over me. But I needed I I needed to know who I was in Him. And so one of the first encounters that I had was a destiny encounter, and it was. Was God absolutely telling me who I was? I came out of that with a conviction about my identity that I did not have before. Mm, so good. If if there are people that are watching and listening today that are like, I'm not sure that I've ever had a God encounter. What would you say to them to prepare themselves um, for a God encounter? And are there certain steps that they should take? Obviously, there's not a formula that you do this and this is how it happens. But what are some of the basics that you would tell people that are really hungry for God encounters? I will tell every believer that you've had a God encounter. The first encounter that we all have is an encounter with the living Jesus. Mm. It, just in the same way that Saul of Tarsus encountered him, we encounter the living Jesus that invites us to come to him, surrender out, repent of our sins and come to him. So we've all had it. We just didn't count. We just didn't call it an encounter. Mm-hmm. I would tell people that as they pursue him in your times of prayer, prayer is not just a one way conversation. Prayer is also me listening. John in Revelation chapter one, he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then I heard something. I saw something. Okay. So it's right out of those times of prayer. You, you'll find that there are, there are moments of encounter. There can be unusual uh, moments that we encounter him. Uh, this was, er, was it early, earlier this year. I was just sitting at home and I was listening to something and uh, one word was spoken. And and that word, I've heard it millions of times. I've heard it. It's a common word. And all of a sudden that word exploded. And when it did, I felt the weight of God just drop on me and the presence of God. And I was in the middle of an encounter. So it can be those those moments, it could be moments that we're sitting in his presence, we're, we're worshiping at home or we're, we're, wherever we are, we're talking about him, talking to him, talking about him. God can show up right in that moment. So prayer, uh, fellowship with him, worship, reading the scriptures. These are some very common ways that we, uh, are, we find ourselves in the midst of God encounters. I believe I still practice fasting. So I believe that fasting, when we uh, submit to that discipline, I believe that it opens up our spiritual senses in incredible ways. Mm, Yeah, that's so good. And I I think it's one of those uh, spiritual disciplines that is often overlooked or people think is uh, not for today for Mm -hmm. a reason, because, you know, it it's our flesh doesn't like it, but it is also important. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Venner, you talk about um, gates and portals and access points um, that are supernatural in our world um, and in our lives. And so what do you mean by portals, access points, and what do we need to know about them? 
What we need to know about them is, first of all, that they are are very real, even though they are supernatural. We have access points in, in the form of our senses. I believe that we also are gates. Mm -hmm. that people can access the presence of the living God when they come into contact with us. Um, I also believe that in the earth realm itself, there are places where it it, it seems to be just a a supernatural uh, flood of either God's presence or can be demonic. Two years ago, I was invited into to uh, come to our nation's capital, and we were on a prayer ride. We weren't walking. We were in the car and we got to a certain area. And all of a sudden I started feeling extremely ill. And I was like, wait a minute, what just happened? What, what just happened? And I knew that, that there was a demonic portal Mm. in in that area. So, uh, when we, when we look at that understanding gates, portals, we then know that there are access points where uh, Jacob, the angels are going up and they're coming down, access points. So it's it's a place of supernatural activity, and we are conduits of supernatural activity. Yeah, and the scripture talks about, too, about gates. And so how does this apply to the subject of encounters, the way that this Bible talks about gates? The way that uh, David, and I'm not looking at my book, so I'm flowing out of the spirit of God with us here today. Um, David uh, sings this song and he says, lift up your head, Mm -hmm. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Mm -hmm. And so we find now he's singing about access points. He's singing about spiritual things lift up your lift up your head okay and the king is going to come in so that's a place of praise that's a place of worship this is how i believe god shows this to us and i'm going to take us back again to um uh, the encounter with with Jacob, we can look at Daniel, I believe Jan, Daniel chapter nine or J- Daniel chapter ten, where the angel comes and he says, "Listen, from the first day that you that you prayed, you know, we your prayer was heard, but we were hindered." And so we see this. Super, so we're seeing supernatural thoroughfares, access moments. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Um, you talk a lot um, in here about um, how God is preparing to use the millennials and the Gen Z for great kingdom purpose. And I think it's so important that you talk about that right now. So if you could just kind of talk about that. This is a generation that has come up in an era where um, there are so many attempts to normalize the occult. There's so many attempts to normalize uh, like yoga or some kind of uh, meditation that's not biblical or is not scriptural. We're in a time, I I call us uh, a hedonistic society um, uh, because in my mind, when I'm looking at us, I see a picture of the book of Judges, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And so this generation is hungry. They are so desiring. They What they really want is God, but they've not seen the representations of him that the Bible talks about. And I believe that this is a generation that is radical. They have courage. This is, not a, this is a generation that uh, will speak their mind this is a generation that if they know what they know the truth, they're going to declare it. They're going to say it. They're going to stand on it. And I believe that the hand of the Lord, no matter what we see, I believe the hand of the Lord is on this that on the Gen Zers. I believe the hand of the Lord is upon the millennials. And I believe that this is why the enemy has pursued them in the ways that he has to confuse their identity, to confuse who they are. They're they're uh, troubled with uh, uh, thoughts of suicide, because if he can overwhelm them and they surrender their time in the earth, it's a way that the enemy can prevent them from walking full on into their destiny. The problem, however, is they don't want 
the representation of God that they're seeing in too many churches and too many ministries. They want to encounter Jesus, the healer, Jesus, the one that stands and represents his father, the one that will not be uh, persuaded by religion or religious leaders. He has come to do the will of his father. What he hears his father say is what he says. What he sees his father do is what he does. He's healing, blind eyes are being opened. He's making a difference. That's what they're looking for. And that's what they are called to. Many of them are revivalists. They carry the fire of revival in their bones. They just want to see change. They want to see transformation. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Preach it right there. That was so good. And because it, <laughs> it is so important. And, and I think this goes to the next question I want to ask, which is because the enemy, he tries to initiate encounters with us. And, and I think that's what we're seeing with the millennials and the Gen Z's is that they don't have this discernment. So what does it look like when the enemy tries to initiate encounters with us and how can we defend against this kind of a spiritual attack? To, to 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 address that, I'll tell you a portion of a demonic encounter that I had. Okay. We were traveling. We were on our way to a prophetic gathering. This was some time ago. Uh, we were on our way. Uh, the prophetic was just being uh, restored to the body. So we were on our way for prophetic training, not fully understanding what the prophetic was. We uh, stopped. We One of the hotels on the list was where we uh, booked our reservation, and the room was pitch black. And all of a sudden, to me, the lights were on. And I saw a dark, shadowy figure sitting up on a rack. And I saw it when it started to move. It's like it was flying through the air in slow motion. And I'm looking at it. And it was so real to me that physically, I stood up in the bed. I, I jumped up and I stood up in the bed and my husband, it's my late husband has startled him. He said, what is it? Now we're figuring, we're trying to figure this out in the dark, right? And I'm standing up in the bed and I'm, 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 I'm yelling to the top of my voice. It's in here. It's in here. Well, he didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And so, but I could tell by the feeling of it. I could tell by the look of it. I knew that it had come from the realm of darkness. Needless to say, we prayed, we broke the power of that thing. We checked out of the hotel in the middle of the night. We went to a different hotel that as I got ready to fall asleep again, that thing stirred up again. And we had to pray because now I recognized something was following me. Mm. And we began to pray. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, ask for the angels. Ask for the angels. And I began to ask the Lord to send the angels and post them around my bed. I have never had that problem. Mm. Another day. That's so good. So and it's prayer. It's knowing the real Jesus, knowing what the presence of the Lord is is and validating that through the rule of scripture knowing that the enemy is rarely going to approach you with the love of god yeah um and because you're talking here really about how um our encountering God can impact our perspective on spiritual warfare. And so that goes to kind of the story that you just shared as well. Um, but can you kind of um kind of develop that thought a little bit more for people that may be in the midst of spiritual warfare and how can encountering God impact and change our perspective? Encountering God changes our perspective when we understand that he, number one, is the one that fights with us. Mm -hmm. He wars on our behalf. He's given us weapons of warfare that we, we use in our warfare. So it's faith, it's declarations, it's prayers, it's worship. This is how we overcome any attack of darkness. God does not want you to be terrorized. God does not want you to struggle uh, because if, you, if you're filled with fear, right, that's the opposite of faith. That's those feelings that, uh, that uh, foreboding something is going to happen. So all the weapons that we need to overcome the enemy, God has given them to us. And one of the things that I also teach in one of my other books is that I believe that the gifts of the spirit are weapons. I believe that when we open up that realm of eternity and we reveal Jesus, that is a form of warfare that will help people to overcome every assignment of 
darkness. I hope I spoke to your question. Yeah, you did. That was great. Well, um, Venner, how do they connect with you? How do they get a copy of Encountering the Living God? They can connect with me. I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, I'm on most of the major social media uh, uh, platforms um, at uh, I am DRVJ Austin. I am DRVJ Austin is how they can find me. My website, drvjaustin.org. They can find me there. They can get a copy of uh, my book from uh, Chosen uh, right on the, uh, the Baker, uh, Baker slash chosen a publishing company uh, website they can order there i believe if they order from uh, chosen uh, it is uh, they pay for the shipping so it's free shipping so that's a that's a good option or they can find it on uh, amazon anywhere uh fine books are sold uh that book is probably going to be on the shelf <laughs> yeah which is great so thank you for that and i'll have those all in the show notes as well so venner is there um anything else that's on your heart that we didn't talk about or we didn't cover today. I want to give you a few minutes to share about anything else about um, encountering the living God and how to unlock the supernatural realm of heaven. Um, And then I'm going to ask you if you will kind of pray us or bless us or prophesy us out of today's show. What I want people to know is that um, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what the circumstances look like, If you will just know and believe in your heart that we serve a real God that desires very real relationship with you, he desires to reveal himself to you. He wants you to know some things about him, and he wants you to know that there is great purpose. He has planned a great purpose, a great future for you. He's given you a destiny. He's given you a future, no matter what it looks like. I want to say to you that you are never uh, too far from the reach of God's hand, And, and no matter what you've done, the river of God's love always always flows to you and never away from you. Encounters are that place of discovery, that we discover some amazing things about who God is and who he is in us. Things that are going to, God likes to tell secrets. He likes to tell us certain things. He says, I won't do anything in the earth until I first reveal it to my servants, the prophets. So there are things that God wants to say to you. I want to encourage all of you that are listening. I want you to find that place of hope. And the, one of the ways that you can do that is by committing to a practice of gratitude. If you will find one thing every day to thank God for, to celebrate, great to honor him to sing about it like david did when he was bringing the presence back in jerusalem he sang and he danced and and he was criticized for it but it didn't matter to him if you will find one thing every day if you will thank him honor him every day you will find your isaiah 60 moment rise and shine for your light has come the glory of the lord is rising upon you in a new way last thing i'll say I read this incredible passage the other day, Lamentations 3 and 22, where he declares his mercies are new every morning. I want you to know that every morning when you get up, there is a new, um, there's a new portion of mercy and love waiting for you as you enter that day. God has not stopped loving you and he has not stopped caring about you. There are encounters that await you if you just look around and pay attention. God is talking. Mm, that's so good, Venner. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, you guys got to go get a, a copy of Encountering the Living God. And if you have millennials or Gen Zs in your life, you need to get this because as you could hear from the podcast, and I don't know if you could feel it, um, but there's such an anointing on you, Venner, for that next generation, for the millennials and the Gen Z to be preaching to them. Um, you have such a heart for them and And so thank you for sharing with us today. I really Mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. welcome. Well, thank thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. If you've been blessed at all in any way, we're going to ask that you do a couple of things. One, 
get a copy of this book Two, share out this podcast episode so we can get the message out of Venner and her new book, Encountering the Living God. And then also, if you're at a place where you can like us, follow, subscribe, or leave a review, we'd love for you to do all of those things. And we look forward to having you join us on another episode next week of Dear to Hear the Podcast. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Oh,